Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I wanted to show you this Hallmaster motorcycle carrier. It's a 400 pound uh, weight limit aluminum motorcycle carrier that I got from Harbor Freight. Um, it's been working out pretty well for me so far so what I wanted to do today was uh, show you the unboxing, the assembly, show you how I load a bike uh, on this single handedly as well as unload the bike and then give you my ideas, thoughts and review on the carrier. So if that sounds like fun why don't we go ahead and rewind time and we'll do the unboxing portion of the discussion. All right, so before we get it out of the box, I wanna show you the condition of the box as it was delivered to my house. This is the biggest FedEx fail I've ever seen. Uh, look at this, <laughs> this is hilarious. Oh man, and, and look at this. You can see the shipping label on it and it got torn after the fact. So I'm pretty sure this was a, uh, uh, a delivery failure. This is FedEx's fault, I'm pretty sure. Look at this. And this box is totally ridiculous. I just came home and this thing is just sitting in the driveway, smashed up like this. Let's flip it over. Oh boy. Yep. Look at this. Well, luckily, I think this is a big chunk of aluminum and hopefully it's pretty bulletproof. So uh, let's get it out of the box and see if all the pieces are still there even after this epic delivery failure. All right, so let's get it out of this, uh, again, epic failure of a delivery. Uh, in fact, oh gosh, see, look at that. <laughs> it even just falls off. Okay, well, let's get the boxes open and see what comes inside. So snip off those guys. And, um, well, yeah, I guess I can just kind of, again, tear it apart because they already tore it mostly apart in shipping. Okay. All right, so it's got some styrofoam and some pieces. Okay, let's get rid of this. Uh, okay, some instructions. And then, uh, nope, that's just part. I think this is the ramp. Okay, so there we go. Get this out of here. Okay. And I guess it's got this box of parts. So let's open this guy up and see what's in this box of small parts where hopefully it didn't all fall out during transit. Okay. Okay, got some bolts and pins and other components. All right. Okay, so we've got a bunch of this here for the main rack. It's wrapped here in saran wrap. So let's go ahead and cut this and get it out. We can see what's in here. Okay. Uh, all right, got some tie wraps, which cut off. This comes in more cardboard. Let's get this guy out. Okay, so I think this is the actual part that goes to the two into the two-inch receiver. Okay, some cardboard. At least that's kind of nice to call it keep the uh, finish <laughs> from scratching during transit. But uh, okay, so this looks like it. So I think these are anti-rattle mechanisms, and then there are three of these big pins, which I believe are probably to secure the wheel. So we'll take, a, we'll take a closer look at what these three pins do in a second. So we've got those and then looks like we've got uh, another box of small components. Let's open this up and see what it looks like. I think this is probably more of the anti-rattle mechanism. So it's interesting. It's a different style of hitch anti-rattle mechanism. Okay, so let's see if we can get everything here on the table at one time just so we can see all the parts. Yeah, I think all that, oh, oh no, so this is I think the anti-rattle. These are like I think for tightening the wheel. Okay, so you got a 5 8 inch hitch pin with um, a cotter pin and then two extra smaller cotter pins. We'll figure out what those go to. No, sorry, take that back. Three extra small cotter pins. Okay. So, nuts and a lock washer and a larger bolt and the instructions. Okay, 
So that's everything in the box. Um, okay, so let's just take a look now at the instructions and get this guy put together. It should be pretty fast, I think. All right, so let's get this guy assembled. So let's start with the uh, the main piece. Uh, make a note that it is not symmetrical. There is a rear, as you can kind of see by the reflectors, and then a front end, which has no reflectors. So let's face it like such, okay? And then uh, let's call this the left side. So we're gonna take the left side. You notice there's a couple of holes on the left side. So what you're gonna wanna do is grab these wheel tightener brackets that they gave us. And uh, first thing is just go ahead and actually we're gonna just disassemble these. So go ahead and take off the nuts off this first set. And this whole thing will kind of fall apart. You can get the bolts out as well. Then all you're gonna to wanna to do is take this bracket. You're gonna to wanna to slide it over this part here and you'll notice again, this bracket is not symmetrical. So there's an up uh, and an upside down. So make sure you have it mounted in the right direction so that this hole will line up with this hole. Okay, so there, everything looks great. Take your two bolts, drop them straight through. Okay, and they should go straight through if I can get it to line up, come on. Yeah. Okay, there's one, there's two, okay, great. Then go ahead and get your uh, wheel tightener and you're gonna have the, the knob out. And just go ahead and attach it to the bottom and then use the uh, supplied uh, nylon lock nuts down here and just go ahead and tighten them on like such. And we're gonna have to tighten this a skosh. Let me go ahead and grab some wrenches. So it's a little bit interesting, they're, they're slightly different. So it's a 9 16 for the top and then a half inch for the bottom. But all you gotta do is then just tighten this guy on, okay? And then once we've got this done for both of these bolts, we'll repeat the process just kind of in a mirror image side for this other tightening, uh, wheel tightening, which will go on the other side, okay? So give me a second to do that and we'll be back in just a moment. All right, so we've got that secure. So now what we can do is grab one of these long, I think they call them wheel locking pins, just slide it through like such, goes through the entire thing. And then go ahead and grab yourself one of the supplied cotter pins, cotter pins and just pop it in. There we go. And now actually, you should still have two of these wheel locking pins. These can go on the right side of the carrier. Again, slide through, grab a cotter pin, lock it in. Slide through, grab a cotter pin, and lock it in. There we go. All right, so now let's flip this uh, guy up, and you'll see there are six bolts and six locking nuts on the bottom. So let's just go ahead and first take off these six nuts. And actually, these middle bolts will actually fall straight out. So you can go ahead and do that. But uh, basically, let's get all of these loose and off. And then what we're gonna want to do is after we get this off is we are going to need to grab, whoopsies, let me put this down for a second. Grab yourself the main part, okay? And let's face this knob towards the rear. Again, right, this is the rear of it. Uh, and then we're gonna pick this up. We're just gonna line these up and hopefully all these holes should line up on top and we can tighten it down. So give me a second to do that and I'll be back in a moment. All right, I got all six of those uh, nuts tightened up. So let's go ahead and actually let's spin this guy around. Okay. And then what we're gonna want to do is grab these little angle brackets, okay? So these are actually tie down points. So you're gonna wanna grab yourself one of these bolts and uh, one of the extra locking uh, nylon nuts. And all we're gonna do is, again, be careful with this tie down, uh, with this angle bracket. Again, it's not exactly symmetrical. There's a perfectly circular hole on one side and then there's kind of a larger uh, kind of oval shaped hole. So you want to take the perfectly circular hole, place it up against this first perfectly circular hole <laughs> right here, okay? So this is where you're gonna be able to slide the bolt through and basically do the exact same symmetrical thing on the other side. And then when you put the nut on this side and tighten up, what you'll end up with is two spots here where we can now attach uh, tie down straps or ratcheting levers or things like that when we wanna eventually tie the bike down. So let me tighten this up and I'll be right back in a second. All right, so we're getting there. So next we're gonna focus on this hole. So what you're gonna wanna do is grab these angle brackets. Um, these are hitch anti-rattle mechanisms. Uh, in fact, we actually did a completely separate video on different types of hitch anti-rattle mechanisms. I'll invite you to check that 
that out if you're interested. But these are nice in the sense that they're already supplied with the kit. So let's just put them on um, and in a rough location so we can uh, test it out later. So all you're going to do is take your supplied bolt, okay, pass it through one side and then pass it through the, this hole like such, okay, and then come around to the other end. Again, take your supplied lock washer, chuck it on. Oh, so whoops, sorry, no, excuse me. Put the anti rattle mechanism on first. There we go. Then put the lock washer on and then put the supplied normal flat nut on that side. Okay, and I guess we're gonna see uh, if that's gonna end up working. Okay, all right. So then grab your uh, 5 8 inch hitch pin and the larger of the cotter pins. And again, we'll just put it here for safekeeping. We're all gonna have to take this out in a second when we install it, but I just wanna put all the pieces together. Um, okay, so I think we're almost there. Let's spin this guy around one more time. Okay, there we go. And now let's grab the ramp. So the ramp will then just sit right here in this spot. Let me see if I can get this. There we go, sits down, then you can, I think you can just turn this, well, let me loosen the wing nut a little bit. Then you can turn this bracket and then tighten it down if you like. Okay, and then this guy right here, this knob will also move this to push the ramp and hold it everything and securely in place. So I'm just gonna tighten this up a skosh just for, for giggles and okay, all right. I think we got it all together. Now let's go ahead and run around to the back of the uh, van and see if we can plug this into the two inch hitch. All right, let me show you one issue that I've encountered pretty much right off the bat after installing this into my uh, two inch female hitch receiver. Uh, namely, I don't know if it's very easy to see, but the, ca um, the cotter pin that goes into the 5 8 inch hitch pin is incredibly difficult to get in there because this hitch pin is so short. So for uh, to get a better view of that, let me remove this anti all stabilizer that they've got okay that they include with the system okay uh, and that's going to give you a little bit better view, but you can see this cotter pin. I had a heck of a time trying to get this cotter pin in to the hitch pin. And in fact, I'm probably going to have to get some pliers to get it out because it is so tight. There is no real clearance with this pin. And again, it's because that pin is so short. So instead, what I think I'm going to have to end up doing is going in, uh, cannibalizing and using a longer hitch pin that I have for another um, item and replace the 5 8 inch hitch pin that came with this with a longer one to solve this problem. Okay, now one measurement that might be helpful is also we want to see how far does the uh, end of this motorcycle carrier extend past the center uh, point of the hitch pin. So basically we can see how far back does this extend and how much length does this add to your rig. So if I go ahead and measure this from the center of the hitch pin to this very end of the cap, it's 33 inches so it looks like this motorcycle carrier is going to extend 33 inches past um, the center of wherever your uh, hitch pin is on the female end of the receiver now the reason i care so much about how much longer this makes my rig is because i actually um, live in an area where i need to ride ferry boats quite often and the ferry will end up charging you extra money if your entire rig is longer than 22 feet so i really need to measure from the tip of the front bumper to the rear of this uh further most rear point of the motorcycle carrier to see how long we are so that's what i've got right here i've got my little plumb bob and we'll go ahead and measure this and it is 22 feet three and a half inches so shucks this thing is too long by three and a half inches so I'm gonna have to come up with a way to basically shorten this thing by three and a half inches so I need this entire carrier to move forward three and a half inches all right so we need to move the entire motorcycle carrier forward by about three and a half inches and what's interesting is if you look at this let me pull out this 5 8 inch hitch pin let me remove the uh, anti-rattle stabilizer mechanism that comes with the motorcycle carrier and if you measure the center to center distance between the 5 8 inch hitch pin and this smaller hole here which is used for the stabilizing mechanism look at that it's 
it's about three and a half inches. It's a little bit short. It's about three and a quarter, but I think that's probably gonna be close enough. So tell you what, let's try using this smaller hole. So what we're gonna use is instead of using the five eighths inch hitch pin, to, uh, to hold the motorcycle carrier in. We're gonna use this smaller bolt that came with the uh, system which was used for this anti-rattle stabilizer system. So that should hopefully hold it in shear and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace the existing anti-rattle mechanism with a different type of anti-rattle mechanism to really lock the entire thing down. So let's give that a try and see if we can get this entire motorcycle carrier pushed forward, uh, in, in this case, I guess three and a quarter inches. All right, so that worked actually surprisingly well. So let's check this again. I think we should probably be over by just, yeah, yeah, look at this. Oh man, it's like, it's like less than a quarter inch. Oh man, it's so close. It's just a gauche over 22 feet. So what we're gonna end up doing is if you look at this, this threaded rod for the knob that all this guy does is it basically presses on this, um, the ramp and holds the ramp in place. So it's actually a little bit, too long so it looks like there's about a quarter inch of this threaded rod i can chop off so let me take the knob off cut off a quarter inch of this so i can move this knob forward just a little little bit and i think we should we should hopefully be there <laughs> All right, so we've gone ahead and uh, chopped off a quarter inch and we got this knob back on. So let's go ahead and check it again and <laughs> look at that, exactly 22 feet, just a skosh under. So perfect, we are finally uh, within the length limit that I'm looking for. Uh, so I think we're good to go. Um, All right, so here we are taking the motorcycle carrier out and this is pretty darn cool, look at this. With all the uh, modifications, we actually fit under 22 feet, so we basically paid the same amount as a normal car to get all of this junk on the ferry. Maybe before we leave this discussion of this knob, this knob actually is super cheesy the way that it's, it's put together. It's basically got another uh, nut here, and all it's doing is it's binding with the uh, knob to make it so that it uh, will twist this entire threaded rod. So if this were to rattle loose, if this nut were to rattle off and uh, come apart from this uh, knob, this thing would just spin freely. In fact, the whole knob would just come off and you might not be able to get the ladder, uh, the ramp off. So that's probably one thing I don't want to have happen when I'm in the middle of nowhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of Loctite on this so that I can make sure that this knob and the nut stay on the threaded rod, uh, even if we're rattling down some dirt roads. All right, now that I've got this installed, I realized I uh, actually put these brackets on upside down, right? So these, they're actually supposed to be used for your tie-down strap. So you're supposed to be able to put your tie-down strap here, crank it down, and hold down the bike. Now, as you can probably imagine, one issue with this is if we're to somehow, uh, if this bolt were to kind of rattle loose on the highway and there's some tension on this, this could swing like that, <laughs> right? And the whole strap could become loosened, um, and, which is obviously not good. So really, these should be installed the other direction. So let me loosen this a skosh more, okay? And then they should go like that, all right? So I'll take both of these, turn them the correct direction. So now there hopefully isn't that tendency, even though this strap has got tension on it, this is not gonna flip around. So, all right, um, let me go tighten this back up and uh, we'll be back in business. All right, since we repurposed the uh, bolt hole up there so we could shove the entire motorcycle carrier forward and closer to the vehicle, we can no longer use these, uh, these supplied anti-rattle mechanisms. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna use this other style of anti-rattle mechanism and again, I made a completely separate video talking about these types of anti-rattle mechanisms, so I'll link to that in case you're interested, but these things are pretty darn simple. They just go like such, like that, and then we take our washers and our lock washer and our three-quarter inch nut and just tighten this up. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this and we'll see how this does.
All right, so I don't know if you can see too easily, but what I've done is I've now replaced, right? So the hole uh, up here used to be for these guys, right? So this was the uh, supplied anti-rattle mechanism that came with the kit. Um, but what I'm do I've done is now I've just pushed the entire motorcycle carrier forward and lined up the hole that this bolt used to go through with my uh, hole in the receiver. So basically now I'm using this hole uh, to basically hold the motorcycle carrier in. So what I've done here is I had to go get a smaller bolt. The bolt that came right here with the, with the kit, as you can see, it's actually quite long, so it was a little bit too long, but basically a trip down to the hardware store to buy a shorter bolt along with a nylon lock nut to make sure it doesn't come off uh, in transit. And basically now I've got a replacement now. So instead of using the hitch pin that came with the kit, right? We talked about why this hitch pin didn't work so well, right? There wasn't very much clearance to get this cotter pin in and out, but now I've got this smaller uh, bolt with a nylon lock nut. So it does the same thing, and uh, I think we should be ready to go. All right, so now that we've got it uh, installed in the hitch, let me show you how I actually load uh, a bike on, and actually you can do it single-handedly uh, with one person. Um, okay, so a couple of things to note. One thing is I found it's a little bit easier if you have this where the side you're gonna load on, so we're gonna load it from the passenger side and flop it on. Uh, you have a little bit of a hill or a little bit of a, a up step on this side. That way the bike isn't gonna have to be lifted quite as high, but you that's not a necessity it's just a nice to have i've loaded this when uh it was perfectly flat and yes you can manage it just takes a little bit more effort um the first thing i wanted to mention is if you notice uh what we're going to be doing is the bike is going to be coming up on the passenger side of the ramp so you're going to have a 200 or 300 pound bike pushing down on this far side and if you notice this thing's got a little bit of torque a little bit of twist to it so i don't like that uh when i'm loading it i want to try to minimize the amount of motion especially minimize the amount of torque torsion uh, that we're putting on the hitch. So to do that, I've just gone ahead and got myself, I made some, uh, this is actually a wheel chalk for my van that I made, and I'm just gonna grab my, uh, my jack <laughs> that I use for changing the tire on the van, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put it underneath, crank this guy up a little bit, and basically I just want to stabilize this side where we're gonna be loading the bike on. So now, as you can see, now, uh, there we go. Yep, that's a lot better. There's no motion at this point. So that's uh, the first thing I do. Next, let's go ahead and get the ramp off. So the ramp is pretty darn easy, All right? Just loosen it, pop him off, okay? And then take it, and then it just sits on that like such. Whoops, looks like I got my bike a little bit in the way. Let me scoot the bike back a skosh. And this actually brings up an interesting point. <laughs> As you'll notice, when we set up this whole thing, it takes quite a bit of uh, lateral space for this entire maneuver, right? You're gonna have to have uh, a quite a bit of a run up. So this is, um, I guess it's, it's, it's not anything specific to this ramp, it's all these styles of motorcycle ramps, right? Uh, where you're gonna need a lot of space on the side in order to be able to do this. So um, we went to a campground uh, one time and when I backed into the campground there wasn't all this room there was a big bush here So it was a little bit hard to do I had to maneuver the van um, to, to, to be out in the road while I loaded and unloaded the bike So again, just a minor thing something to think about if you're thinking about this style of motorcycle carrier where you have to Haul it up a ramp. There are other styles of motorcycle carriers that I've seen which have basically like a hydraulic jack uh, Here which basically hit, picks up the bike by either like the skid plate or right on the bottom So that doesn't need as much room but those are also a lot more expensive. But anyway, I, I digress. I think we're getting off on a tangent here. Um, okay, what was the next thing to do? Oh yeah, we're loading this on. So I'm gonna come back here. I'm gonna open up the wheel, the front wheel uh, spacers as much as possible. So these stabilizers, I'm gonna open them up. Then I'm gonna take out the pin and take out the rod for the front wheel. So the front wheel is gonna sit right here in this uh, location. So I'm gonna keep this close on hand and then, uh, okay, so we're almost ready. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna get as prepared as possible because we're doing this with one person. So let me go grab some straps and get ready. Okay, so I've gone ahead and prepared pretty much as much as I can. I've got one strap for the left side um, of the bike and I've got one strap for the right side and I've already got them hooked in and easy within arm's reach because by the time we get the bike up here, I'm gonna be holding onto it with one person and you're not gonna be able to go run off and grab a strap and hook it all in. So I wanna get everything as tightly uh, 
uh, as close as possible. So that said, the next thing I do did is, I know you probably can't see it as off camera, but on the bike, I took the uh, right hand mirror and folded it in as much as possible because the bike is gonna be pretty darn close to the car. In fact, it might interfere with this rack of skosh. So I want mirrors and anything else that I can, I'm gonna move them in and fold them in as much as possible. So with that, um, it's pretty much just make sure your bike is lined up in line with the ramp as much as possible and then come back and keep your hand on the brake and all it is is just roll it up. So we're just gonna roll it up the ramp. There we go. Okay, and I'm just gonna double check, there we go. Okay, and then just push, push. Everything's still lined up, yep, okay. And then I'm almost there and now it's gonna plop down in this seat and there we go. Okay, it's plopped. And now you can kind of see what I'm talking about, right? The mirror here is really darn close to the uh, the ladder, but it fits. This thing fits exactly perfectly. I mean, I'm super happy with this. So now, since we did all our prep work ahead of time, I can just easily grab my strap, which is already ready to go, and I'm just going to start tightening him in. Whoops! All right, let me go ahead and hook this guy on to the handlebar, like such. There, tighten, tighten. And now, we're not gonna tighten this thing down a lot, just enough to keep the bike stabilized for now. So I'm gonna do that on one side, and then also on this side as well, okay? So again, just tighten it enough so that the bike is not gonna go anywhere. I don't wanna compress the suspension yet, okay? There we go. Perfect. Okay, so the bike's not going in. It's not going to tip fore or aft, so that's perfect. The reason we want to do that is I'm going to come down here now. You remember, this was the pin that helps lock in this front wheel so it can't go anywhere. So now, I don't know if it's going to happen in this case, but there are some situations. Actually, it's almost, well, well luck, I lucked out here. Right here, it, 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 it cleared the spokes, no problem. But I've had it several times where, just by dumb luck of the draw, a spoke was exactly in line of this pin here. So what you want to do, luckily, since we haven't compressed the suspension a ton, it's easy to actually come here on the front wheel and you can actually actually just whoops you should be able to just there we go see see I can I can rotate the front wheel a skosh right and I can basically rotate it so the spoke is out of the way and now this pin fits in cleanly well <laughs> this is hilarious now I rotated it so 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 a spoke is blocking it so I need to do this again let's try that okay now there we go right nothing happens perfect so it fits through, okay? Now, it's interesting. I've seen um, a couple of people uh, have told me, where, or I've seen their videos where the rim of their wheel was too tall, so this pin doesn't go through and it would interfere. So luckily for me, this works out cleanly. Now, actually, tell you what, let me pause ca the camera and show you another angle, because this next part is interesting. All right, so what I wanted to show you was this front wheel stabilizer, right? So that's what this knob does over here. So I've tightened this side in all the way. I've backed this wing nut out all the way and I've tightened it in as much as possible, okay? So it's it's touching against the front wheel, so that's great. So now let's tighten it on the other side. So same thing, I'm, I've backed this wing nut out all the way and now I can start turning to try to get it in as much as possible. And what I'm trying to get at here, it's kind of interesting, if you notice, let me see if I can get this thing working there we go okay so now it's made contact it's starting to compress a skosh and ha, look at this there we go i've hit the, the exact limit so basically my tire is about the thinnest possible tire that will fit in these clamps if you have anything thinner it is just not going to hold it uh tightly so this this is actually pretty good so it's working right now and i think that's probably because you know i've got a i've got an enduro kind of dirt bike style setup on here and this this tire is probably a lot thinner than most street tires so uh, I guess I'm not 100% surprised with this but basically long story short this basically perfectly fits anything thinner would not work for this type of setup all right so we've got the front wheel locked down so now it's just a matter of tightening up the uh, ratcheting straps and compressing the, the suspension of the bike a little bit to get this uh, nice and tight the one thing to note here is um, I want this to be kind of as close to the van as possible I have this restriction that I need to make sure my entire rig is less than 22 feet so that I can fit on the ferry boats. So I'm gonna have to tighten this inside strap a little bit more because this is gonna this is gonna allow me control to pull the bike closer, but at the same time I also have to pull this side. So basically long story short, I'm just need to compress these 
equally and make sure that the bike is pretty much vertical or if anything leaning in towards the vehicle a little bit of course you got to be a little bit careful i don't want this handle so darn close to the windshield that any bounce is going to put the wind the handlebar into the into this rear window so uh all right that's pretty much it it's basically just do the rest of the ratcheting straps strap down some on the rear to make this thing work and then here I'll, let me show you the 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 ramp it actually fits perfectly in even if you've got ratcheting straps and things like that going in here you can still weasel the ramp in here after you've done all the ratcheting and then tighten this thing up and you can be off on your way so this actually works out surprisingly well all right, and actually, now that I've got the uh, the ramp off, uh, I kind of wanted to show you one thing. I've got the bike strapped down, um, and I don't know if you can see that very easily, but it's definitely kind of bent, <laughs> right? That main uh, member, the two large bars. In fact, I, I bet we can get a better view if I come over here and look at it straight on down the edge. Uh, let me see, is that, yeah, you can kind of see it there. Can you see? All that tension from uh, all the downward force from the front and rear wheel, it's kind of bending the, these two main bars. Like this bar, if you look down the edge, I think you can kind of see that it's actually, let me see if I can get a good angle, that you can actually see everything. Uh, it's kind of hard to, yeah, I guess you can kind of see it there, right? Right, that it's a little bit bent. But um, when you unload the bike, this thing actually comes back straight. So again, this is a little bit interesting, <laughs> is maybe the uh, correct adjective for this. But I guess, you know, what can you really expect for, for a carrier like this? Um, so again, I just wanted to point that out to you, that if you strap this thing way down, this entire member, right the entire crossbar you know from there that point is lower than the middle and then it comes low again so it's a little bit bowed but uh you know it seemed to work okay it didn't fail catastrophically so far so just to compare you can see now that we've got the bike unloaded uh the rack kind of goes back to yeah pretty much darn straight so that's good to know so when it's loaded you know it looks like we did not actually get to the uh you know the plastic deformation point on that stress strain curve looks like we stayed within the linear range staying here at thin kind of young's modulus <laughs> so we basically don't have any permanent warpage in the rack so uh that's that's definitely good all right so getting the bike off is pretty much the opposite we're just going to go ahead and loosen our ramp pop them off comes out barely between the straps so again good clearances then i'll go ahead and grab my jack stand i'm going to just brace this side okay all right then we'll go, go ahead and grab our ramp just sit him on it's looking pretty good okay now <laughs> i guess it's kind of the long and uh, non-trivial task of loosening and untying all of our tie down straps uh, so tell you what, I'll pause the camera and we'll be back in just a second after I manage to get all of these tie-down straps loose. Okay, and then before we loosen the tie-down straps, we're going to want to come here and loosen up the front wheel holder. So again, spin these guys out completely to give the front wheel as much movement and play as possible. And then what we're also going to want to do is, again, pull the pin that locks the front wheel down. So pull out this rod set him aside we're actually going to need him in just a second all right so now i think we're ready to uh loosen the uh tie down straps now again remember um i pushed my motorcycle carrier as close to the vehicle as possible so actually this right handlebar is kind of close to the uh to this rear window so the last thing i want is i don't want to loosen the straps and have the the handlebar go right into the window and shatter it right so what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to loosen um the ones that are closer to the vehicle so the ones on the right side of the motorcycle so i'll loosen those first so if anything the bike is going to tip outwards not inwards towards the vehicle okay so all right so i'm going to go ahead and start with some of these rear ones and these ones should come off easily because i you know the rear suspension i don't think i compress quite as much as the front suspension so again, I'll go loosen this guy. Okay. Okay. All right, and now, here we go. So I'm gonna loosen them slowly with these ratcheting straps, and I'm gonna loosen the one on the inside first, so the bike should swing out a little bit. So I'm just gonna brace this and get it ready for this. Okay. 
And here we go, we pop the strap. There we go, no problem, all right? Okay, so popped. Okay, there's one strap loose. Let's go ahead and get this other one loose. It should also pop a little more. There we go, see it's popping out. Good, good. Get that strap clear. Okay, now I'll loosen this last one. And there we have it. Okay. Let me just pop these off the handlebars so we have a nice, clean, easy way to work. Okay, perfect. So now what I'm gonna wanna do is actually, it's actually, it might be tempting to try to push the bike off forward, but I've discovered that actually takes a little bit of effort. So what I wanna do is I'm actually gonna rock it backwards a skosh so it goes back and sits on these two. Um, somewhere in between the rear quadrant of the motorcycle carrier. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that pin back in to kind of bridge that gap. So here we go. So we're just gonna put, roll the bike backwards. There it goes, no problem. There. Okay, so there we go. So the bike is now sitting on the rear, and now I've got this big gap here, but I can basically go ahead and re-grab my pin, keeping one hand on the bike to stabilize it, right? I'll go ahead and put the pin back in the cotter pin in so this guy can't move. There you go, now I've got a nice platform that the front wheel can roll across, right? So now just keeping your hand on the brake, front brake, pop, 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 down, 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 down. There you go. And there we go, bike's off. All right, so there you have it, the Harbor Freight motorcycle carrier. Um, again, uh, I think I'm pretty darn happy with the thing uh, considering the amount of money I paid for it. So uh, remember, Harbor Freight always seems to have their 20% off coupon deal. Um, in fact, uh, I don't even think I received the coupon. I think I just went and Googled Harbor Freight 20% off coupon, found a coupon code, applied it to this thing. So it knocked this thing down to right about $100. So for $100, what can you really expect, right? This thing is working great for me so far. Doesn't have all the bells and whistles uh, that I'm sure other motorcycle carriers have. Um, we saw that it takes quite a bit of lateral space to load and unload your bike. Um, but, you know, we, we were able to customize this. We could move it forward as we needed to. Um, it's fairly lightweight. And for my purposes, it works great for my, my little dirt bike here. Um, I've taken this thing on, I don't know, probably, probably four or five trips so far, probably put around around 500 miles uh, going down the freeway uh, in campgrounds, a couple of little minor bumps. Um, but uh, again, uh, nothing major. Of course, I'm in a van, so I'm not gonna be going on any giant off-road pothole ridden things. So I can't really speak to how well the motorcycle carrier is gonna hold up on in that situation. But you know what, that, I mean, that's exactly why I have the motorcycle carrier. So I actually leave the van in the nice, smooth paved campground, then I can just deploy the bike and then ride the motorcycle up on these uh, kind of nastier trails and, and no problem, and that handles well. So like I said, I'm thrilled with this. It's nice and compact. I'm, I think this is about as compact and as tight a configuration you can have where the motorcycle is as close to your vehicle as possible. We saw that you're able to do that with this carrier. Um, so I am pretty darn happy with it so far. Um, with that being said, I think this is probably a great spot to leave it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if so, I also hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. If you just scroll a little ways down and click on that subscribe button, surprisingly, it really does help me cont uh, continue making these videos. Uh, and the new videos, remember, they should come out every Monday, so I hope I'll catch you at one of these future discussions and we can all learn something new together. So uh, until I talk to you in the future, I think I'll sign off for now. Talk to you later. Bye.